the first of all, you gotta you gotta introduce yourself. So like you know, you gotta introduce yourself to the people. So this is like, give me your name and where you're from. Okay. Well, my name is Nicola, but I go by Angel. That's just the simpler, easier end of it. Um, where I'm from, that's the harder question. I can tell you I was born. And I was yeah. on the south side. <laughs> all right, all right. Give me both. Give me both. Where, where you, where but you? I mean. I've lived South Side, West Side, Inglewood, South Shore Drive, Lakeshore Drive, so all over Chicago, uh, but went to high school in the West Suburb, so Maywood. So I'll say I'm from Maywood just because that's where I spent a good solid four years in one place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I know plenty of people know like those, you know, in Chicago know like those neighborhoods of heard of them. What was it like growing up there? Like what, you know? Like, is it, is it a, a fluent, did you have, did you grow up with a silver spoon? Did you grow up like, you know, rich parents um, going to college? Like, well, in the beginning, like we moved every six months. Like I lived um, at 71 South Morgan across from Wentworth, <laughs> you know, in the row house, it was a little rough over there. But then like, you know, my mom, she met my stepdad and then we kind of moved out to the suburbs a little bit and ended up with some some kind of black privilege going on. Had the house on the block everybody wanted to be in. Um, it was a foreclosed house that they fixed up nice. But, you know, ended up getting a, a little bit of that. But, you know, still kind of just rail balance. My parents was like, we broke at the end of the day. Remember that. Yeah. Um, so just kind of that type of childhood. Yeah, yeah. So you went to high school in the, in the suburbs. How was that experience? Like, what, what was that like? It was interesting like i was supposed to go to stymes and my mom didn't want me to go there because she was like they fighting all the time and i don't need you know she was just so worried and then i went to high school in the suburb and it was like these kids still hood and they still fight all the time <laughs> what's the difference you know um i can't really i mean the education i can't say if it was better or worse you know my mama went to whitney young yeah. I ain't, I ain't go there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's crazy, man. You're like, looking back, you know, it's just like, uh, as a parent, even now, like, you got to worry about what you send your kids. Like, first thing we think of, uh, you know, especially black people, like, I ain't fighting. Like, it's just like, you go, they go to fight over here, fight over there. It's like, man, the fights, man, it's just like. Yeah. My mama, she grew up in the Ville. Okay. So, and fighting all the time. And she was like, I don't want that for my kids, you know. So she tried to get us into schools where we wouldn't have to deal with that. And it was like, kids going to be kids. They going to find no matter where you put them. Yeah. And so like high school, and then did you go to college? You go to college? I went to college. All right. uh, I went to Eastern Illinois. All right. Eastern. I went there for a little bit. Realized after three semesters, I'm paying 26000 a year to be here. And I'm not happy. Mm. Why weren't you happy? Burnt out, really. I was one of those kind of like gifted kids, mm. reading at the higher levels, performing academically, getting kind of awards for my intellect. And it was just like all of this school, all of that, you know, having done that for so long. When I got to college, it was like, wait, I got a choice. I ain't got to be here. <laughs> I don't have to stress myself out this much. I can breathe. I can take time and breathe. And I was kind of what I ended up with. And then it was like, I was also spending 26000 which to a lot, some people, they're like, that's it? That's a lot when you're doing it all by yourself. And I didn't feel like I was getting enough out of my education to really be spending that much to stay somewhere that I'm not happy being here. And I'm not really learning enough that I feel compensates for the fact that I'm miserable here. Yeah. So I just took time off and started working. Yeah. What did you go to school for? What did you major in? Um, yeah. Psychology and pre-law. Oh, man, you was going in. What made you want to go into psychology and pre-law? Um, that's still my major now. I'm, I'm back in school, but that's still my major. Um, ooh, we, can go on, we can go on a tangent about that. Why that's my major. <laughs> uh, all, right, all right, I'll come back. I'll, I'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, man, you, leave, you leave school, right? You leave school, you come back, and you start at working, right? What, what was the first job? What you, did you start doing? Well, the first job I got out of college, I actually stayed in the town my my school was in. I stayed there, and I worked at Walmart. Uh, Walmart. Man, I felt like man. The, the, the... <laughs> <laughs> Why you uh? You know, it's just like man, bro. It's just like that's the story of like everybody. You get out of high school, college, and it's like that Walmart job. That you know, it's like we don't McDonald's. go to Walmart. Yeah, McDonald's, the retail. 
Like, what was missing? Like, did you want to work at Walmart? Was that like the goal? Or like, you know, it was like, no, I mean, Charleston, Illinois did not have that much going on. Yeah. And it was like, there's no public transportation down there. So if you didn't have a car, you had to get something local. And the Walmart was 10 blocks away from my house. Mm. And I will ride my bike, <laughs> ride my bike or walk. Yeah. And that was it. After I left Walmart, I ended up working in a R.R. Donnelly, a magazine factory. First time I found out about a Fortune 500 company. <laughs> yeah. And so then how, how many? So then you like Walmart, the magazine factory. Like, what, what was that? So you like went from jobs. How many jobs, jobs did you go to? Like, what was that? Let me see how many jobs that I have. Walmart, magazine factory, health insurance, homemade tech support for one company. Then, so six jobs six. from 2013 to 2018. Okay. The Walmart, the factory and tech support, I held them down two, two years each. So, you know, within that time, six different jobs. Okay. What was you looking for? All right. So it's like you jump job, job. Was you looking for something? Like, what, what was you, why was you, you know? Well, I was going to what was hiring. But also, like, something that I realized, like, my mom, she kept, I actually even trained with the Marines <laughs> at one point. <laughs> I was about to go into the Marines. And my mom, she's like, you just, you just doing anything. You know, you're just doing anything. I was like, but it's, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Mm. And this is helping me figure it out. If I, even if it's not telling me what I want to do, it's telling me what I don't want to do again. Which is just as valuable sometimes. Right. And, you know, also with me being the psych major and like in law courses, when I became a home aide, that made me realize I didn't want to be a therapist. I didn't want to be a psychiatrist because I couldn't, I'm a care a little too much, you know, and I wouldn't be able to separate that. And I, it, you know, there's just a certain level of your heart that you just got to protect. And I knew if I was a therapist, I wasn't going to be able to do that. And that career would probably take me out. So I didn't know that, though, until I became a home aide and had started to, like, see a glimpse of that, you know, because I was doing it for developmentally challenged individuals. So I'm taking care of 14 people who need me, you know, and when one of my residents who had, um, he was 35 years old with early onset dementia from severe seizure. And he came up to me and was like, if there was a gun in his house and I would, I would kill myself. And when I told his caseworker and she told me, oh, that is just him being, what was me? I was like, oh, I can't stay here. <laughs> like, that was like, that was, heart button was hitting a little too hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go. So then I'm like, man, what made you, how do you, how do, how'd you find rework? Like, how'd you find rework, right? My cousin, <laughs> Paris. He, um, I had roundabout way. We ended up in the car together going to pick up my car from an impound lot. And he, you know, like he, we were just talking and he was like, you know, what are you like, what are you up to? And I'm just like going with the flow. He was like, you should, you should look into this. And I'm like, okay, what is it? He was like, you know, my boy, he doing it. You know, I went through it. It, you know, it's a good program. I was like, okay, but what is it? And then he started, he was like, oh, it's like tech sales. And I was like, <laughs> like and I was like I'm I'm a listen you know I'm not just going to immediately pass judgment but I was like you know Paris you got car salesman charisma I'm not that type of person I don't know but I was like something just kept saying listen don't like don't immediately like don't dismiss don't dismiss this listen and then I ended up looking it up and it was like I ain't got nothing to lose, might as well. Yeah. And so I uh I hit y'all up and did the application for rework. Yeah. You regret it? You regret that you made did the application? No, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. It's actually one of the best things I ever did. And I did not expect that. Wow. So like well, if you had like one big takeaway, if somebody so like Paris hit you up, like do this and he says something to you, right? And clearly you like he got the used car sales and charisma that ain't <laughs> me, right? So like like if you had to somebody if you were sitting in the car, if you was in a pair of shoes and somebody was, you know, talking to you, uh, what would you tell them if, if you had like what was the one big thing, you know, that that you took away, I guess. If Paris took something away, what what'd you take away? Value. Like 
do if I had to like tell somebody hey you should do this it would definitely be just keep an open mind keep an open heart and at the end of it you're gonna come out with volume that you did not have before value like as in like value like that you get in school like because I feel like you know people like is this school and that's what I'm saying so it's like you know you're like you I mean you could you could but you can't if you was in school, there would be so many different groups of people around you. You might not end up in the group that could get you the information and get you the I'm not I'm not sure the self worth also as along with the information. You might not stumble into that group, but you could stumble into a group like that where all the people bring together a small piece and it gives you this like the same thing that the program gives you but also you could just go to the program and you can get it like a streamlined dose immediately <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so then what you, what you so so what's next for you right and i you know i think one of the things that we talk about at rework is like man you know whether you're going to tech sales or not we just trying to like shit that value we want to give you the game and then like you do what you want with it you know you make moves happen you do what you want where, where you uh where you at now um i mean i'm a couple of jobs later uh, <laughs> but I currently deliver sushi. What, which, was, the, what was the first job? You said a couple jobs. What was the first one? So when I did rework, I was working for a startup company. And while doing rework, it made me realize my value and my worth. And I immediately got up out of there and I started working for a call center for banks and credit unions okay. doing that. But now I, I, mean, I drove special needs kids for a little bit after that and now i deliver sushi um all of it is kind of with the key goal though they're like strategic steps even though it doesn't seem like it all like right. well yeah that's what i'm saying where you going where you want to go uh well right now like i said i'm a full-time student i took five court, uh five classes this semester so i'm still seeking that dual major in law and psychology and i needed a job that paid enough but also did not work me too much <laughs> So mine, I like right now I have a set schedule. I'm done by 12 every day. And that gives me the time I need to dedicate to my school and in classes like I need to. Yeah. And so looking back, when you think about like big picture, like where you want to go and where you're going, you know, despite the fact that you're not in tech sales, right? You're like, man, I went back to school because I, I got this goal, the goal that you set out when you first, you know, to mm -hmm. college, you know, did did you think you're going to be able to use the stuff that you got from rework is that is it going to help you or I've not? Been using it so far <laughs> like it the, it's not in the way that y'all intended it to be but it, it you know i've still like one thing like when i when i was talking to jim when i was doing my interview and we were talking about it and something that i also learned during rework tech sales is in everything like it's in your customer service it's you know not always the selling part of it but like it's in customer service it's in just about everything it touches a base so like even though i'm not directly doing that like one thing that i learned how to do and rework was network i thought networking was what the lobbyists did or politicians did and it was all sneaky and grimy and I did not have the most optimistic view of networking, but after like going through rework, it was like, it's just having conversations with people casually and speaking names in room. I'm like, easy. well, it was like, <laughs> you know, and it was like, and that's what, that's kind of like what I mean by when I say the value in network, it can really change your, your perspective on a lot of stuff going through rework. Like the fact that y'all was teaching the interviews is just as much for them as it is for you. I was like, what? Like, you know, I was like, wait a minute. I hold value in this interview right now? <laughs> I didn't, what? I, wait, I matter? Like, you know, that was just like, whoa. And so just small stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's not sales, it's not tech, but it, get you a long way and it's something that I can keep taking with me just those like some of those smaller pieces that you know may get overlooked yeah 
Yeah, so now are we at the end of it? We at the end of it, right? So this is what I need, right? So then, like, you know, get this work is what we say, man. Get this work. Like, we know because it requires work from everybody. Like, you get involved, it's like work, right? And so, like, if you could give us a tagline that ends with, like, get this work, right? If you had, like, this is the commercial part where it's just, like, you know, if you sum up your, your story, your life, and you're talking to, like, a younger version of yourself that, you know, needs to hear this, right? And it's like, all right, what was me? But if you want to get get this work, like what would that what would that sound bite sound like, right? But it's got to end with get this work. Know your worth and get this work. <laughs> know your worth and get this work. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. Love it. Love it. Cool stuff, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.